And well, a fine, happy Monday to everyone out there in the internet sphere. Uh, my name is Nick Scarpino. Welcome to The Morning Show. Uh, I have a very, very special guest for all of you audio listeners who can't see the smile on my face right now. Mr. Jack Patillo is back Hi. from Achievement Hunter. He is, he's back with us all day today. Not only are you here with us on The Morning Show, you're also doing uh, our, la our, our newest MCU in review. Uh, we're going to be doing Mar uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 as well as Spider-Man Homecoming, and you're going to be sitting in for that. Absolutely. I'm very excited to do those. Did, Tim, did Tim tell you that he stole the idea from you? No, I, actually, I heard Jeff uh, Jeff told, or Jeff was on here, I guess. Uh, yeah, we had, Jeff, we had Jeff back. We had Jeff And then on. he mentioned, I think you guys mentioned to him that I was the idea, or I, I was sort of like helped make the yeah. you know, creation of it all, and then Jeff's like, never fucking tell Jack that. That mm. would be a terrible idea. Don't, don't, no, I don't immediately that told idea. you. I like to, I like to, my favorite thing to do is pit my favorite people against each other. Oh, well, I guess. Like, like a tournament of some nature, well, you could it's say. Just, uh, it's just fun for that. I, I, you know, uh, We'll get to that a little later, but I'm very excited for you to be on the show. No, you actually, when you were here in the office in yes. January, you said, hey, did you guys know if you watch, starting now, if you watch one Marvel movie every week, Leading up to it, they actually time leading up to yeah, the video. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you drop that amazing piece of knowledge on us, and then you just left. Yeah, like, you just you bounced, Here's went a back to, for you. to Tejas. Was that uh, January I was here? I think so. Or maybe it was, I mean, maybe it was I mean, December. It would have started in January. So maybe it was December. was December then. Yeah. Um, Either way, yeah, we, we uh, it, you put the idea in Tim's brain and then it gestated there. That's good. I and love. came out like a beautiful baby. I love, love, love talking about movies. And uh, and I'm in a situation where when I talk about movies on like our podcast, yeah. on our topic, I, I can get carried away with it. And people are like, all right, shut up, shut up, shut up. But mm. here I feel like. The audience is very much like, yeah, let's talk about movies. Let's talk about the MCU. That and you is, guys made a whole series talking about the MCU. It's so fun. Which is like, oh god. And so I, I knew I wanted to come back. I tried, I tried to, I tried to work it out on my schedule multiple times, and finally got it to work the week before freaking Infinity War comes out, which was supposed to come out in two weeks, but it comes out next week. I know that was. So, why did they move that up? Because because uh, Robert Downey Jr. is like, hey, let's watch it a week early, and then Marvel's like, okay. Well, at least that was the the tweet whole Baller. thing. Because he announced it. He was the one who announced it. Oh, okay. It was yeah. going out in Europe. Uh, this week, or like next week. Oh, really? Yeah, so it oh, was that's just, right. they yeah, made yeah. it a global release. That's right, it was like yeah. worldwide. It was like, Robert Downey Jr. is like, why not just show it to everyone worldwide, which makes sense. I don't understand why they do staggered releases I have anymore. to imagine that was the, that was the plan all along. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Mar Marvel's really good at the high, at making the hype factory go into yeah. full effect, so I, I, I have to imagine they were like, let's just fuck with it. I remember when they announced the name of Civil War, but they called it... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't... The yeah, it was a Serpent Society or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, I don't like that name. Let's do Civil War. And everyone lost yeah. their sh literal shit. Well, they shit in their hands and just threw it up in the air well, that was like, in a celebratory fashion. They did They did a big thing where they brought all like the, the actors on stage. Like somewhere, I like the like Pantages or somewhere in, in L.A., and they usually it's like a Comic Con type thing, mm -hmm. but Marvel's gotten so big now, like screw it, we're gonna do our own thing. Yeah. And I have a feeling we're gonna see another one of those probably after Infinity War, where it's like, all right, let's talk about you know um, phase phase four, phase four yeah. of, the, of the universe. Well, it's wild to see that we, shot. We were literally just talking about it now, like after you know after Infinity War, you've got Ant Man and Wasp, you've got uh, Captain Marvel, mm -hmm. you've got Avengers Four, which they haven't said the name of it because it's a spoiler for this one. Yeah. Which is wild. And then that's it. We know there's another Guardians. We know there's another Spider Man. And then that's it. And it's like, all right, there's, but I mean, they, you know, they've got a slate like probably five years prepped right now. Oh, they have so to, yeah. They're gonna come. They're gonna have something and announce. Here's the rest of the movie. This it's is like, what's got stage be, four. Or here's phase four. Here's phase five. This is what has to be so scary for for the producers over at Marvel and Disney. Like Kevin Feige must be like, because you can't fuck up. Like you are on you are on the razor's edge when it comes to going. Like you've announced these movies. You know they don't have. They probably have a rough idea of where the story goes. Yeah. But I doubt. That five years from now they're going to be able to accurately like, like figure out what's going on with that Spider-Man movie. You yeah, know? yeah. It's, I mean, it's really just, crazy to. Um, so I'm watching Agents of Shield right now. I love Agents of Shield. No one watches great, it. I love that show. It's a great show. show. Yeah, it's a great yeah. show. Um, I, we've had people recommend it for like since we Dude, started. This. Last season was so good. The framework haven't and Ghost Rider. There. Haven't gotten there yet. Okay. okay. I'm on season. If you make it past Three. season, yeah, okay, make Did it past you say season. Ghost Rider. One. Yeah, yeah, Ghost Rider. I was at the gym the other day because I work out. And I saw, <laughs> I saw on the TV, not Ghost Rider 1, Ghost Rider 2 Ooh. was on TV. And man, did was Nicolas Cage not looking that good. Well, I Boy, will, he was looking poor. The Ghost Rider they have in this series is Robbie Reyes, who drives the car, not the motorcycle. Mm. But then they, they allude to some of the other, like there's multiple Ghost Riders. Yeah, and so they, like they kind of talk about them. So like at one point, there's like two Ghost Riders on the screen. It's like, oh my God. So, I, anyway, I, just, there was, I literally was watching, watching the scene on, uh, on TV at the gym because I work out. 
uh, where he turns a god like a gigantic digging crane thing into like the hell, like it all goes on fire and it just, I was like, I gotta go back and watch this movie, man. I think I slept on Ghost Rider 2 a little bit. I, I was gonna say, it's, it's crazy dope. how hard they went into the, like, Inhumans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, the, the Inhumans were a whole, that was the big part of the of the the, the TV stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Agents of the Shield. And then then there was like, oh, they're gonna make a movie. It's like, right. oh, maybe they're gonna finally tie the TV show back into but it's instead, the movie But like, instead, I've been doing research and it's like, no, the, hmm. the well, the movie never happened. It turned into a TV show instead and the TV show doesn't tie into anything. Is no. it still it's going? Own little, no. That was one with the big dog, right? Well, yeah, actually, yeah. It, like, I think it's still going. No, in humans, no, in humans, they, they aired, I think they shot Eight episodes yeah. and only aired like six of them. They didn't finish the they didn't run. Finish it. Yeah, nobody um, had any interest. Yeah, it was. It was I mean, it, well, it's it's so dumb to like. I mean, the Ages Ages of Shield, great mm. show. I mean, it's it's now very much a soap opera. Like, there's a lot of really cool characters, yep. a lot of fun stuff. But I mean, why then be like, oh, this is working? Let's go ahead and derail and do something completely different well, and I not mean, tie it think, in at all. I like, I, I would imagine that like that all started because they didn't own the X Men and wanted to have something like that, and then it probably died because they were like got into talks of. Buying uh, Fox, right? Or, uh, yeah, probably. I don't. I don't think it goes that. I don't think it's that far. Well, no. I mean, like. No, I think Agents of Shield is just is just one no, Marvel no, I'm, property. No, I'm talking about which one? Inhumans. He's talking about the oh, Inhumans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, the Inhumans and X Men have existed too, so I don't. Well, think. yeah, but like the X Men comics, like they they got really derailed because uh, Marvel didn't want to promote things they didn't own. Yeah. That and like Fantastic Four also yeah. got really derailed. And uh, oh, they the were problem. they were doing oh. a really hard push for Inhumans, but I just I, feel, I don't feel like it's speaking of Fantastic Four. Okay, before we speak of oh, Fantastic God. Four, ladies and oh. gentlemen, this episode of the Kind of Funny Morning Show oh, is brought to you by Kind of Funny Prom. Kevin, bring this up. You can get your tickets for prom still. Hey, do you want to go back and relive your childhood, or was your childhood terrible and you don't want to relive that and you just want better memories? Well, guess what? We can remember it for you wholesale. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Sixty dollars. Early bird price, June thirtieth, San Francisco. And by the way, it's not just the prom. It's going to be a whole weekend of cool community events. We have yet to announce a few of them, uh, and they're going to be really, really fun. So definitely come hang out. Even if you don't want to come to prom, come to San Francisco that weekend and go to your local Starbucks and tell them Nick told you to say hi. And they'll probably be like, Nick Scarpino, yeah, he's horribly addicted to this place, and he's wasted all of his life savings on coffee. And I say it's an investment, and my wife says it goes right through you and pee it out. You say I'm going to go to the gym. Got, you know why? Because <laughs> you go to the gym. Because I work out. That's right. Panzer G2. I work out in the chat. Uh, we are also brought to you by Me Undies. Woo! Me Undies is sponsoring uh, this morning show and our giveaway later. Uh, and I will get into how you win the giveaway a little bit later today. After all the news, we're going to go into that. Of course, if you guys want to tip us, please make sure you tip us at the $5 above level. You can say what's up to Jack. Ask him a question for sure that he has to answer. Uh, unless he doesn't want to, in which case we'll take that question and just stuff it right back into the internet. Shove it right back in there. AMAA. There it's it is. Almost anything. Almost anything. Uh, of course, this is a morning show that we do live here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames every day. We also break it out onto YouTube, so if you can't watch live with us and be in the chat and hang out and have fun with us, well, you can be in the comments on YouTube later, and I'll pop into those and say what's up to you, and we can continue the shenanigans over there. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button for no other reason than I just like to see things go up, not down. There is something oddly gratifying and oddly satisfying about checking back every day and just seeing a couple more subs there. I like to add people to the ranks of this here positive fun army. That's what I'm calling this from now on. Positive fun army. This is the positive fun army. It's GF like the army that we don't fight wars, PFA. we just party. Right. How about the party army? That's what we are. Party army. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, next house, oh wait, Kevin. Yo, yo. It's wait. housekeeping time. Oh, wait, hold on. We have to, do we want to do it? Do you want to queue? Let's do it for tomorrow. Because yeah. I feel like this show's going to run long okay. today. Well, I just, I don't remember where the link is. We'll find it tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, more housekeeping. Uh, of course, we are down to the final four in the Kind of Funny first annual, or inaugural, as uh, Gus has told me time and time again. Best friend tournament. Your final four, which uh, no votes today. The voting's going to start tomorrow, is DiGiorno's versus Barb Dunkelman and Tim Schafer versus Elise Willems. Elise from Willems Funhouse. is an eight seed? She Who the hell made Elise an eight seed? Wait, it's fun for one. <laughs> and two, she hates this so much. Oh yeah. She's so uncomfortable by I've her, consistently about this. said Elise Willems is the funniest woman at all of Rooster Teeth. Possibly probably the funniest person at all of Rooster Teeth. Mm -hmm. She's hilarious. She is certainly someone who is better uh, than Funhouse. I'll yes. tell you that right now. She is wasting 
her time and her talents oh, at yeah. Funhouse. She should she should be she should take over for like Jimmy Fallon. I've encouraged her uh, time and time again to get up on stage to do stand up. I've encouraged her time and time again to do improv. I think she could be, be the next Maria Bamford. She'd be great. She is super talented. Uh, uh, Barb also amazing. But I will say this: love Tim Schafer. DiGiorno's is going hard going on very this. hard, man. And I will say they're going so hard that I feel a little bit. I, I'm getting that like. <laughs> That like excitement slash fear from them, you know, like <laughs> yeah. like it, it, I start thinking they're gonna get a tattoo. Maybe they're gonna get funny, a t- yeah. kind of funny tattoo. <laughs> um, they reached out to me. and They said, Nick, if you if we win this, we we you stop saying the silent S at the end of our name because I call them DiGiorno's. Oh yeah. And they're like, there's no S at the end of it. <laughs> to which I reply, Bob DiGiorno's, no. Bob Jones. I'll say how I'll say how I want to say it. Well, there's not even an S in the, in the bracket there. It's just DiGiorno. No, it's just DiGiorno. <laughs> it's an invisible it's, S. It is singular. I like to make it possessive, or plural. I like possessive. It's DiGiorno's pizza. It's DiGiorno's pizza. pizza. Yeah. yeah. Like Scarpino pizza, but I would call it Scarpino's pizza because you get, it has the familial feel to it. I'm just look, look, DiGiorno nationwide. You guys are selling. You're making some money. I'm just saying, if you guys want to make a little bit more money, why don't you take a page out of Scarpino's book here? See how I pluralized what it. What does that mean? Pluralize your shit, Pluralized man. It makes you it. feel. Ba- it makes you bigger. From now on, we're going to be called kind of funnies. What? It's not plural. It depends on how I use it. It's true. It's two different things. It One depends on the context. Let's just ignore him. Don't it? You, you can't, can't ignore can't. me. I'm hosting the show. <laughs> it's impossible to ignore me. So we just kill the light on his side. Drop his mic out. Oh. Anyway, no, is DiGiorno in no. the chat right now? DiGiorno's I think they are. Probably in the, the chat. DiGiorno is in the chat right now. They are. Yeah, we are they very fearful, the chat, Nick. Though. They're, they're afraid of Barbara. On Friday when I was asking them to send us some pizzas, they weren't, suddenly they weren't there that day. Man, they asked for my help. They asked for uh, for help, and I was like, I was about to retweet their their, their cry, but they had already won. And I was like, oh, shit, sorry about that. No, no they're, they're, yeah, they're taking it hard, and to their credit, they are, go, they're going hard on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Barb, I don't know if she knows this is happening. <laughs> uh, pretty sure Tim Schafer is staying as far away from this as humanly yeah, possible, yeah. because this could be potentially brand wrecking for him. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've got a feeling Elise is going to take your your Eastern bracket. I don't know. Like, do you have whatever it's called? I think that she's going to be the the champion on that side. Yeah, it's going to be Elise versus DiGiorno. I think you think no. it's going to be DiGiorno. I feel like it's going to be man. They're going I think so Barb's going to win. Like, you think Barb's going to take? Yeah, it? it's just like she's got. I think it's like, going to be DiGiorno. Just, I, I'm going to be honest. DiGiorno deserves the overall win. Yeah, yeah. DiGiorno They're is getting... putting in the time right now in the chat, just being awesome. They definitely get the participation like, award. Just, yeah. just call it out. Uh, Is Barb, Barb in the chat right now? Chat. No, I, I don't think so because the journal is calling Barb, her out. Well, first off, it's like five o'clock. Yeah. Uh, Texas time right now, right? Isn't that how Central Time uh, works? It is currently 1.14 p.m. Central That's Standard time. time. Central Daylight Time. Excuse I've, me, I've, CDT I've right been now. to the Rooster Teeth slash Achievement Hunter offices. I know you guys take five-hour lunches. Yeah, so, so if, her lunch if it's between 10 a.m. and about 3 in the afternoon is lunch. No one's working. Yeah, no one's, no one's, no one's, one's going to work right You guys now. are so big time. You're like, you walk in. Like, Michael just, just like, walks in. He's like, I'm ready for five minutes of work. Screams on camera, says an expletive, walks away. Oh, you need us now? and takes care of his kid. Yeah, well, let's film something. Let's just go ahead and spew out some gold for you. That's how it works. That's how it works. All right. Uh, cue up your tips. We will read those in a little bit uh, as soon as I bring that one sign up. Is but before we, we get into that. So we say to your wife, cue up your tips. No, to my wife I say, please, please, okay. please, please pay attention to me. And she goes, <laughs> no, I'm going to leave town. Uh, let's bring up this first news story. It's a weird slow news day, but I'm glad we have Jack here because he's very, very entertaining. And I, I also I have, a surprise, I have a surprise later for Kevin, too, if, if, uh, if we can talk about that. But that's oh, okay. I mean, that's we okay. can absolutely for talk me? about that. Well, we'll get to it in a little bit. Kevin's mind. Let me just, let me guess. What Kevin's thinking the surprise is right now. Okay. An extra big bag of flaming Hot Cheetos. Close. Okay. Close. I'm thinking cool. it's Legos. Close. Oof. This comes from Radio Time. Now, what the hell is the story? Who put this story on know. here? Did I put the story on here? This is RadioTimes.com. This is not a real website. Slash Fargo's news. Carrie Coon to film. play crucial Avengers Infinity War villain. We've learned a lot more about Thanos' henchmen ahead of the new film's release. This is from, yeah, I guess this is from today. Up and coming blockbuster Avengers Infinity War has an immense cast with nearly every superhero from the Marvel Studios. 18 previous films joining forces to take a stand against Thanos, Josh Brolin, and his plan to wipe out half the universe. <laughs> but today, the cast gets a little bigger because RadioTimes.com can reveal that the leftovers in Fargo star Carrie Coon has also joined the ensemble voicing and performing motion capture for one of Thanos' henchmen as part of his deadly Black Order. Black Quote, Order. Carrie Coon is Proxima Midnight. Co-director Joe Russo revealed in a new video interview below, and uh, quote, and you may know her from season three of Fargo or The Leftovers. Um, this is where I start to go, cool? 
Yeah, it's like okay, yeah, we knew Proxima Midnight was in the movie. Yeah, it's like oh, we're, here's the actress. Like okay, why would like, why did we not know this ahead of time? Why is this a secret? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, I, I mean, the more the more trailers, the more footage we've gotten, the more we've seen more of the um, uh, the what or the uh, the Black Order, the Black Order. Yeah, like now we've seen Doctor Strange with uh, that creepy uh, what's it? God, not Proxima. Um, uh, I forget oh, his name. the weird guy that looks like, like Voldemort. Yeah, yeah, the one right there next to Loki in the middle, um, like that dude there. Chat, apparently, what's his name? He no, controls. Uh, he can control people. So like, basically, he's using Doctor Strange's own powers against him. Okay. And it's like Doctor Strange is fucking powerful. I mean, we is, saw. Doctor do we feel like he's going to be the Adam Warlock in the story? I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I, I would think so. The guy that, like reaches out to everyone and kind of brings everything. Together. Well, so Adam Warlock has the Soul Stone in the comics. Like he he, he basically yeah. kind of is the guy who has the Soul Stone. That's the one we don't know where it we is. We don't know where it is. We, do we assume that the gold people, the, the sovereign have the, the stone and have imbued it into no. maybe him, like vision that's they put it in. I, I, wouldn't, I, I, didn't, I don't think, know. I, Cuz he lived in the Soul Stone in the like, comics. But like that's the thing. I think they've confirmed that Adam Warlock is not in this movie. So I mean the question is are we going to see Thanos with a complete gauntlet by the end of this movie? I, I don't think, think so. we I don't think we do. What? I don't think we do. I you mean, have to though cuz I feel like the second movie has to be about them trying to beat him. Uh, I yeah. don't I don't I mean I, don't I mean right so. now they're I fighting so. him. I, I think that oh man. I feel like the ultimately I really amazing want, I want it to end with, with him putting the on snap. the glove, snapping yeah. and that's it. Just cut to black. That'd I mean, say, it's gonna be an Empire Strikes Back kind of ending. It's gonna be a dark yeah. ending, or it's yeah, just yeah, like oh yeah, half like we're we're killing off some people. The question is, do they come back? Uh, his name is Meanie Face, according. Oh, Ebony Maw. There we go, Ebony, Ebony Maw. Ma. Thank you, everyone. So Ebony Maw is the one in the middle there, and he's like master manipulator. And so apparently in the com- or like in the comics stuff, he'll use Doctor Strange's own powers against him. And so we've seen the shot of you know of Doctor Strange like kind of levitated with all the spiky things in his face, which yeah. was the stuff that. Uh, that Mads Mikkelsen was using on yeah, him. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, Mur- not Mur- Murda, what was his name? Mordo. 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 No, not Listo Mordo. Um, or something like that? Uh, God, of course, the, I've forgotten everything no, about see, the doctors, No, no, here's so, the thing. The Doctor Strange names are really hard it's, to remember. Mor- Mordo was... Mordo was... Is it Kaecilius? Yes. Kaecilius? Kaecilius. Kaecilius. Kaecilius, Kaecilius, yeah. Kaecilius, which is a character made up for the movie. He yeah. doesn't actually exist. So I Kaecilius the, had the weird spiky ice thing. Yeah, and from like the Shatter World, the Glass World, wherever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, And so you, you see a lot of that in the trailer. So you like, feel like Doctor Strange is going to be, do you feel like he's going to be the one that's like, hey, I'm pushing the envelope forward here. I'm the one with the master plan. Someone has to be the one with the master plan. Well, I mean. Someone has to use the Avengers as, we as see fodder, a, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, like it's very clear they're all splitting up. So there's the Wakanda battle. There is the Titan battle, which is the the where Thanos' homeworld is. Right. And then there's uh, New York too. And so it's kind of like they're all sort of spread out. I mean, like New York probably happens early in the movie, but it's definitely Wakanda and Titan. Well, this one's all about getting those last few stones, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, already, he's, got, he's already got two of them, right? He's, we're, we're assuming he's got three. Well, in after the trailer, Thor you Ragnarok. see him dropping on the second stone. So right. he he's gonna start on Xandar. He's gonna just destroy Xandar. I think pre-credits, what's going to happen is going to be a flash of Thanos rolling up, and it's going to be Glenn Close going, hey, hi, I, and then just boom. Do you think pre-credits are that, or do you think pre-credits are Thor getting the shit kicked out of him? Uh, no, 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 because that's the second That's the second stone. He already has a stone by the time he makes it to Thor. Ah, okay. And so it's going to be Xandar, it's going to be Thanos' ship rolling up on Xandar, him going to the Nova Corps, going like, I want that, and they go, no, and then he just wrecks Xandar, gets the first stone, and then he goes up, and then it's the, the ship uh, next to Thor's ship, and that's going to be the credit sequence. Then he b- takes Loki hostage, takes the uh, the uh, the um, cosmic cube, and then he breaks that, gets a stone out of that, drops it on, the and then he goes to yeah. Earth. Okay. And then that's Wait, when wouldn't he have to go to uh, the collector at some point before going to yeah, Earth? Yeah, yeah, he's got the ether. Right? ether. I mean, well, we don't know where the collector is, but I mean, the ether is definitely well, I mean, something. The, the collector's probably still in nowhere. Probably Vegas, I would imagine. I mean, he could be. I mean, well, I mean, nowhere got blown to shit, so we don't no. know if the collector moved. No, I mean, nowhere. I mean, his like well, office. His, his yeah, collect, yeah, but, but I'm sure it? he fixed it. I mean, like, uh, it's going to be... Uh, that's his base of operation. That's you got to figure Howard the Duck has that one, right? So he's, I, he's hope How, I hope <laughs> Howard the Duck is the, is the fulcrum of this entire yeah, series. Because, man, Green. he's oddly featured yeah. in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. He's just kind of everywhere, and you're like, why? Yeah, why do they keep world. bringing him? Is he everywhere? He's, is just he like, he's in, in a bunch one... of little small scenes, then in the end of the credits, you're like, why is he... Why the fuck... Why is Howard the Duck? I, I, I didn't even see him. Yeah, go back. Watch the credits. He's like in the end. He's, he's on that talking that, again. He's on that ice planet with uh, where it's uh, the Ravagers are all hanging out and like. Yeah, uh, he's like partying with them with yeah. Sylvester Stallone. It's weird. Yeah. He's actually, like once you go once you go duck you never go back or whatever, whatever he said. I weird. Was, weird. Explosive corkscrew penises. Well, but uh, but it's gonna duck, go then. Yeah. But he's gonna have the, he's gonna have the two stones. Go to New York. Because he knows that Doctor Strange has one of them. The Eye of Agamotto. The Eye of Agamotto, which is the time gem Agamotto. or time stone. Yeah, there it is. Um, and then we know Vision has one, so that's four. Vision has the Mind Stone? 
Yes. Mind, yeah. Um, and then you, then we're, I mean, we're looking for Soul Stone. What's the other one? And the what? Ether, which is which is um, what the Collector has. Yeah, so it's like the Matter Stone, right? My like guess, more matter with that. My guess is the yeah. Guardians are going to go to the Collector. They try to be like, we know where that one is, and so they're going to be like, hey, we need to take care of that, and then something will happen there. Yeah, that um, makes sense, though. That's. And so it'll be. I mean, you Thor. Thor Thor's going to end up with the Guardians, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. going to go off and do cosmic shit, and you then don't Thor's going to go straight to Earth. Uh, no, I mean, I think like, there's oh, enough characters no, that they have to split them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, that's that's the brilliance of this. Like, they're all, if some of the stones are scattered amongst the galaxy and the universe, like they have to. It gives them that opportunity to have the dual action. Yeah, where they're yeah. going away, but like two stones are on Earth right now, right? Yes, at least two. We have Vision. We have the the Eye of Agamotto. Yeah, which yeah, does Wakanda have one? The, that's the, that's people, the theory. People are assuming the soul stones in, in, in Wakanda, yeah. which seems a little on, like, on the nose. <laughs> it's, it's like three on Earth. Cool. Yeah, it's way too many on one planet on, on Terra. But like, why? Why would they be going to Wakanda? Well, I, I think like, they. I think like they go to Wakanda to battle. basically hide. I think they're like, shit. We need a base, and Wakanda is just like super I, fortified. I, super I, city. I really hope that that's why they're, they're hiding Vision there, essentially. And yeah, yeah. I hope he's in the Veronica suit. Yeah. Like, uh, that would be so I, see, cool. my fun thing is, I think Hulk is in the Veronica yeah, suit. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. Yeah, because there, like, there's like a Hulk jump Hulk. where it looks very yeah, Hulk, Hulk kind of jump. So, yeah. and uh, we've seen Banner working on it. So, like, clearly it's well, I mean, has something he helped, to do with that. Yeah, he helped build it. Yeah, well, I mean, the, in the trailers, you see oh, Banner working, working on, it? on it. Yeah, yeah. So oh, it's like, I'm so it'd be kind of cool if, like, all of a sudden it was, you yeah. know, a Hulk Buster and his Banner in the Hulk Buster, and then he gets taken down, and then boom, Hulk blows out of it. So cool. Which could be a cool shot. So, anyway. If you don't, if you can't tell, I'm, I'm excited for no, this No, I'm very excited for this movie, especially since we've been doing the MCU. I'm excited to have you on the MCU in review today. But since we've been doing those, building up, you just start to look back and go, what an extreme and extraordinary accomplishment yeah. that this series has been. And the fact that it is just going to keep going and keep being good yep. is, is insane to me. Going back and watching Homecoming again. Oh, and not movie. necessarily being excited for it, because I was like, okay, I've seen this before. And then... Finishing that movie and go, I fucking immediately want more Spider-Man. Yeah, like, yeah. I immediately want to see, uh, well, the final I, show I want Donald Glover to come back. Ugh. I want all these people to come back. I want, like, I want more of well, that world. It's so, it speaks so many volumes And they to do what the they thing where they just here. drop little hints where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, this could be a thread that could be a whole series. Oh, it's just like, it. you know, when, when, uh, when freaking Donald Glover is like, oh, yeah, I've got a, I got I got a nephew a, yeah, to live here. And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. shit, that's Miles. Yeah. That's Miles Morales. And it's like, oh, I also God. love it. That scene's so fucking good where he's like, ah, no, 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 no. You gotta come take care of this. Yeah, like, I it's gonna wear on two hours. Like, I got ice cream in like, here. You're a criminal. You're a criminal. You're a bad guy. Yeah, you're a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, you so you gotta good. get better at this part of the job. Oh, God, I love I love everything. I love I love the MCU so much. Well, speaking of more MCU uh, news, and especially expanded universe news, let's, this comes over from uh, io9 right now. This is Marvel Cinematic Universe's Thanos origin will be re- revealed, but not in a movie. Up until now, most of the information you want about the Marvel Cinematic Universe was in one place, the cinema, but this... November, the MCU is expanding into another medium, books, which, uh, with its first officially canon tie-in novel, and it's all about Thanos, the Mad Titan, who's about to wreck the Avengers' entire world in Infinity War. Thanos, Titan Consumed by Barry Liga, is an origin story for the MCU's in, uh, incarnation of Marvel's biggest baddest villain, set well before the events of Avengers Infinity War. Here's the official summary. Space. Space. The final frontier. Reality, mind, power, time, soul. Before creation itself goes yada, yada, yada. Uh, only beings of immense power can hold, can hope to wield these infinity stones. But for those who are worthy, the power of God awaits. Thanos is one such being, but he wasn't always. Born on a doomed world and cast out by his people for his genius, physical deviancy, and, and sexual prowess. I put that last part in there. <laughs> Thanos is determined to save the galaxy from the same fate as his home world, no matter how many billions have to die. Learn the origin of the most formidable foe in Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange, and Black Panther have ever faced. A foe whom even a group of remarkable people pulled together to fight the battles nobody else could will fail to stop. Dread it, run from it. Destiny still arrives. Thanos is here. How do you feel about... When is that coming out? Because uh, I want to read it. Great question. Yeah. I guess you really like this. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I like yeah, the MCU. No, this actually is a bigger interview with the, with the uh, writer over on io9 if you want to read that. Everyone, there's a Q&A over there. Give I, me a date, Nick. I Somebody in the chat, Google it. Or Kevin, Google it. There's no date here that I can see. Now I'm panicking. Uh, and now I'm just doing that thing where you just go up and down yeah, the page yeah. looking start, for a date. Just looking for numbers. And I just, is it weird? Does his face look so, super blurry in this? It's He's young. It's young Thanos. It's, young Thanos. it's like, but it's like Kurt blurry, Russell. He's got a blurry and, and face. John Hughes Thanos. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about those backstories being told in books? 
I'm, as opposed to movies. And they're, I mean, they all the backstories were told in books. They're comics. I mean, That's fair. <laughs> literally, it's like this. I mean, this, you don't think I, you ever want to see the like the the Thanos origin story movie, I'm, like the solo I mean, movie? It could still come later. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, honestly, like we could always see more of this. I like anything that fills in more information. You know, it's like you, when you watch the Harry Potter movies, you're like, oh yeah, like they'll throw out references to stuff that if you read the books, like, oh yeah, I I know what that means. Or if you, you just know? troll Pottermore.com. Yeah, yeah, and so it's like I I have no problem with that at all. I'm the nerd who read like. Like Assassin's Creed books because I love like God. all that th- all the lore and that's stuff. That's a bridge so. too far, sir. Yeah, that's and a bridge so. too far. Uh, I'm in support of this only because I don't want to know a lot of the origins of these people. Yeah, I, I look at the, a movie like Solo. Yeah, uh, a Star Wars story, uh, and I think to myself, I, I, I'm optimistic about it. Like I'm going to be. I, I just choose to be optimistic about Star Wars okay. now because I just choose to. I've had enough hate in my heart. Uh, after the last one came out, that I feel like you know what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be on this roller coaster, and if it's if it turns out to be Space Mountain, great. If it's more like the teacups, I'll just throw up, leave, and never there think about it again. Um, but the the problem with me is Solo is like I kind of liked when the books filled in those details, but weren't necessarily official because it still left an air of mystery to the characters. Yeah. I feel like Disney on the Marvel side is doing a good job of just giving you the meat and potatoes of it, and then leaving those. The smaller characters for the other mediums. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I feel like on the Lucasfilm side, they're giving us way more. Like it's like, hey, do you want pizza? Great. Here's more pizza. Here's more pizza. Here's more. And at a certain point, you're like, yeah, no, no, I don't no, want no, any no, pizza no. anymore. No, stop. I don't want any pizza anymore. I want to go to the gym because I work out. I will tell you the way to my my fix for the solo movie. Yeah. Uh, is, What's your hot take on this? Is uh, call it Lando and make a movie about Lando, that would be not about fucking Solo. That would have actually been a great. Don't, idea. It would have been worry. great because yeah, like give him, like give him time. I mean, Lando is a great like a, a side character that's involved with the major universe, but we know very little about him. We know him oh. and Han were friends when they were younger. Make the movie about Lando, and there's like, oh, oh, that was Han Solo. Like yeah. they, they meet it for a, bar, a second, or he loses the Millennium or, Falcon to him, and it's like, it, oh shit, okay, but or it's the same story. With yeah. him, it's a buddy cop like high, like buddy story, but it's centered around Lando. Yeah, and you don't make Han the main character, so we don't see too much of him. Yeah, I mean that's, the problem is everyone's gonna be like, oh, Her- what would Harrison Ford would have done in this? And it's just like, uh, oh, it's all about everything better. Yeah, and so we like, know what he would have done. Go back and watch the yeah. original Star Wars. Go back and watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. He would have been dashing oh and God, cavalier. Great. On the flip of that, yeah, make an Obi Wan movie with you and McGregor. 100%. I'm 100% down with that because you and McGregor was Obi Wan. It's Fucking baffling to me that that wasn't movie number one. Rogue yeah. One comes out, success. Yeah. Next movie followed up. What's oh. up, Ewan McGregor? Still got that smile? Yeah. Still got that hair? Does my wife still want to have yeah. sex with you a lot? Can you start cool. growing that beard? Awesome. Yeah, okay. get the beard out and let's do that 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 story in between. A story that a time that we don't really know anything yeah. about. Yeah, like that, that, like you know, basically it's 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 Obi Wan on Tatooine watching over a young baby Luke, you mm-hmm. know, making sure he's okay, and it's kind of like. What does he get into? Maybe he falls in love with someone. We don't know. Like I know nothing about Obi Wan between you know uh, Revenge of the Jedi, or Revenge of the Sith, and uh, and New Hope. And it's like, or what? There's so, clearly stuff happened, and he kind of became, kind of became that sort of like old crusty dude. Yeah. And, what happened to him? Like and, why? Why is he on? Why did he choose to go uh, to to watch over Luke on Tatooine while Luke decided to go and just suck the teat? Of the sea cows. Yeah, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Like those odd similarities. Well, I, I here like, the, I like the idea of when Jedi get old and kind of like they exile themselves. They kind of go a little bit crazy. Like Yoda went nuts, you know, and like Luke went nuts too. And it's like I had no problem with that. A lot of people had issues with like Luke being all pissy. Obi Wan didn't go nuts. Obi Wan was a fucking nuts, G though. all the way to the end. L- Yoda was walking around talking and like just whacking Luke yeah, and R2 that was and an stuff. Act. And yeah, that was an act. He was and, like, he, he was testing the young Padawan yeah. just to see where he was. And guess yeah. what? He was still immature. Long, what does he say? Like, you got a long way to go, buddy. That's what he said. When he finally reveals himself, that he's like, really hey, said, you yeah. thought you were the shit? You're not the shit. Watch this. Bam. Point to the ocean. No. Point to the lagoon. The swamp, point yeah. to the swamp. <laughs> takes the thing out. Puts it down and says, drops the mic, walks away. What yeah. up? And then he eats his food. My favorite part, when I was a kid, I just wanted to eat whatever that thing was that he was eating. Like the K-bar, that he, the K-ration oh, that he yeah, had. Yeah. I love that. Anyway. I love that. We'll what? see what happens. God, but yeah. I, So you're not, wh- where are you on a scale of <laughs> one being, eh, like this is gonna be the solo? worst movie ever to ten being like I need I'm like rock hard for this. The new trailer got me a little more interested. Not much though. I would say I'm I'm at like a five or six. Are you, are you, I'm interested. You, would you say you're definitely gonna go watch it? I'll see it. 100. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Star Wars. I'm gonna see it. Opening like, like day. 
Uh, probably opening week, yeah. yeah. Like I, I mean, honestly, I try to see movies opening day because people yeah. spoil them, yeah, and so exactly. like, especially that, in the that's, world that's, we live in, yep. like, yeah. on the internet, 100%. it's like if you don't see it immediately, someone's gonna yeah. spoil it for you. So yep. like, I'm nervous. I'm in the second screening of Infinity War, and I'm literally gonna be like ah la 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 as yeah, I'm walking into the theater. Yeah, you just have to unfortunately stop checking social media. Yeah, yeah I literally like, like that day yeah. I'll go dark because yep. someone yep. Uh, someone ruined um, Force Awakens for me. Like, really? I was literally about to go in the theater, and I was like, oh, it was crazy when when you know Han dies. I was like. Oh shit! And I was like hoping that wasn't real. I was like, oh no, that was real. No. Like, Thanks, assholes. What a great and beautiful and earned moment when Han died in that movie. How great was it? <sighs> where you okay. actually were like, that makes sense. It's sad, but it makes sense. Uh, is this an allusion to Luke? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Yes. What a great moment where he was like, I'm willing to die because for my child. I'm not going to kill my child. I'm willing to die for him because that's what a father would do. And he dies and he falls down that fucking thing. And I, like, man tear comes down. I'm like, that's what I would have done too. Because Han was a fucking man. Luke, on the other hand, you know, on, he, he, at the yoga retreat, just dies on a rock. Luke saved all the resistance. He, pre- he gave them enough time to get away. Sure did. Sure did. <laughs> sure did. On the rock. Well, I mean, he was on the rock, but his his force projection was on on Crate? Crate? What was it? Crate? I don't know. I don't plan it. Probably could have just gone there too, you know? Did, he, did he have a star speeder you can get around with? He had his fucking X-Wing, didn't he? Yeah, he had his, uh, he had his X-Wing. It, well, we saw it like, it was in, in the, the ocean, water. right? Yeah, like, well, it was. Remember, think, he could probably do this. Oh, yeah, he could get for it back. sure do that. Yoda but, that like, shit. I think he like, shake it out like there was too like, much water. I, at that point, it was probably in there for like 20 years, right? Or yeah. how long did they say? 10 Dude, but they're, they're, years, 10 they're space ready, bro. That's fine. Those things are space ready. I know very little about engines. I know very little about engines, but I know water's not good for them. You know what I bet happened, especially salt water. You know what I bet happened, though, was the sea cows took care of the ship for him. They just washed it all the time, and in return for that, he sucked all that vile venom out of their out of their udders. He's a farm boy. He drinks milk. Out of a cow? Like straight straight from the tip? He's a farm boy. He grew up on a farm. We're getting into... I don't well, think they're here. They're here to take me oh, away. Yeah, well, no, they're probably here to take me away because everyone I, is so tired of me bashing the Last Jedi. I, I like Last Jedi. Wait, wait, wait. Do you, well, like, is that a thing farm no boys do? Drink straight out of the yeah, tea? Yeah, sure, most absolutely. farm boys, they go, they go to the cow, they drink straight out of the nipple, and then they bang the cow. That's what they do. Nope. That's, That's you not went what too they far. do. You went too far. That's so I'm assuming, I think we can assume from that that Luke was having sexual relations with those cows. That's why he didn't want to leave a stupid fucking rock. No. <sighs> Uh, let's go into this next news story. <laughs> people hate me, by the way. Oh, okay, that's they fine. fucking that's hate fine. when I say Oh, don't worry. People when hate me and me Kevin too. start talking about it's The Last Jedi. It's all good. You know, actually, it's interesting. Uh, what does DiGiorno's think of Last Jedi? Uh, that's the DiGiorno's, question. Well, they have to play the politics. They got to play politics. They got to love everything. Okay. Uh, except for when I say the ass at the end of their name. They don't like that. When I just make shit up. Do they, uh, do they actually not like that? Have they ever said that we don't yeah, like Yeah, no, that? they tweeted at me. They're like, no they were like, if we win this competition, can you please stop using an S at the end of our name? To which I replied 100% no. Absolutely not. I will do whatever I want to do because I am the host of the show. This is my own little power center and nobody can stop me unless it's Greg or Tim, in which case they can walk in and tell me to stop and I'll stop. Um, one interesting thing to note What's was that? when I started my tirade about how how I did not like The Last Jedi. Uh-huh. Uh, I was blinded by the rage for a while there. I was Kylo running it a little bit. Come out of my funk and you start to read some of the people's opinions on it. Whatever, I, it's not going to change my opinion on the movie. But what I thought was fascinating was there were a lot of people who originally watched the series in, like the, the first series, uh, episodes uh, four, five, and six, in theaters. And they were like, what you guys don't understand is it's always been polarizing. Yeah. There were people who left Star Wars. There were people who left the, the Empire Strikes Back and thought, what a terrible film. They've ruined the story. They took it in a whole different direction. And so they're like, maybe in 20 years, we'll look back at The Last Jedi and go, oh, what a pivotal moment. And maybe the perspective will change. No, I will Definitely say. Not. So you, keep you, watching this show for 20 years and maybe my opinion I will say, change. you can't argue with me when I say some of the most Star Wars moments ever were in that movie. Okay. Like the the Red Room fight, where it's that was dope. No, no, no. That was one of the most like holy. Will, you wanted to see say. that in Star Wars forever. The the fucking ship warping through the the Super Star Destroyer or whatever. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! Like that was that, like. And that's the sad thing to me is there were such beautiful moments in yes. this. There were amazingly directed great moments in this. And then there was just some stuff that just to me just made no sense. Like literally just made no sense. No. And that was the hardest thing for me to get over. Was I was like, and people are always like, well, it's a st- it's a story about people traveling in space. You have to suspend disbelief. And I'm like, yes, I appreciate that. 
but you still have to have some level of logic that dictates what these characters do in this world. And to me, they took some a lot of that and they just threw it out the window. There, there were some dumb hey. things. There were some very dumb things. Like so much of the movie could have been solved by telling Poe the goddamn plan. Yep. Like that would have been a huge thing. Um, a lot of people had issues with the casino world. I actually really like the casino world. Yeah, but because that scene with that. The, now okay. it's worth it. All right, like, so go I, to hell. I, I like the idea. I like the idea of we set some horses free. We won. Okay. Uh, what are they gonna do? They're gonna go fucking eat grass, uh, and then someone's gonna just kill them and eat them. I like the idea that there are there's a group of people in the universe. Don't give a shit about the First Order, about the Resistance, about anything like that. They're just there. They're like there's no, no, no. See, no, that's, no, and that's I like sad, that. Wait, wait, I like that. Those the, people were connected to like they yes, were the ones they, making they money. They didn't care. I mean, that was but the thing. See, they no, were on they the outside. That's, they that's what I like. Continue. That thematically, Ooh. and I hate to use the word thematically because every time I say thematically, people go, "Ooh, Nick's such a fucking dork," and like, "Oh, how pretentious is he?" Very pretentious. First of all, yes. Second of all, I loved that they played with that. I loved that they get to a planet where they were like. Hey, guess what? These people are profiting on both sides of the war. Like yeah. you think, like I loved, and that's what I thought this movie was gonna do, was really kind of play with the idea of like, hey, who's right in this situation? Yeah. Because they've been fighting this war for like 40 years, oh, and man. nobody's won, and millions of people have died probably because of this. Maybe not millions, maybe hundreds of thousands of people have died. Well, no, so they like, blow up a bunch of planets. Yeah. Oh yeah, they yeah. Blow up, but they yeah. blow up planets, the rebellion's killing people, stars, like, you know, they're, they're killing like a lot Death of them, stars. everyone's getting killed. So at what point do we like, do we call a spade a spade and be like, hey, maybe both sides are, are culpable in this. Yeah. Like most of them, you know, are accountable for this, right? Also, I stand by the fact that the Rebellion is the most poorly run organization ever. They <laughs> had it in the bag after Jedi. Yeah. Let it slip. Why are they still... Yeah. Who, like, I, everyone's like, Leia, a strong leader. No. No, yeah. no, no. Get someone else in there that yeah. actually knows how to run this fucking army. Now, I will say, uh, fucking Tim Geddes uh, blew my goddamn mind. He said something that made Never so happened. much sense Never that I, I, I've repeated it multiple times Never over happens. to many different people. Mm -hmm. He said, the Casino Planet, instead of having the goddamn horse oh creatures God, or whatever. Yeah. Should have been pod uh, racing. Fucking pod racing. Yeah. Holy if shit. If they had made pod racing, I would have stood up and walked out of that fucking No, no, no. no. If it would have been like the F1 of pod racing, yeah, that like, been, that, like you go to that Monaco. Awesome. Yeah, okay, like, that would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been like. Yeah. Yeah. And it would have been made a, sense too. Yeah, it would have made sense. No, but then, but the problem horses. is when you take all the pods, yeah. the inanimate objects, and release them back into the wild so they can walk five feet, it's not and as then immediately heartfelt. get recaptured again. Yeah, it doesn't Absolutely. make you think. But, hey, but then you get the grease monkey kid who can Lib still like liberals he still are winning. Gets, like he's oh still like, kind of like, and that could be an illusion, you know, yeah. Anakin. But then, it, then it's you and know, like it's like they trigger all the pods just to tear through the scene. That's how you get that whole scene. You can't trigger the pods because you have to. They're inanimate objects. So you have to be able to feel for the horses that are slaves and being mistreated in this. I mean, I, so I that when you let them just walk five feet over to the right, you can feel, you really feel the, how validating that is, yeah. how earned that moment is with this character that literally does nothing the entire film. But God damn, but just watching Finn go by and like, and like trigger them all, and it's like running down the line and it's like sending them into the city oh, and then getting in one. Shit. Holy shit, that would have been awesome. And then like tear through and they make it to the Especially edge, if like, Sapobita or whatever the other character's <laughs> name was there and one of them just went right into his fucking head. <laughs> in the casino, yeah. Just, he just dies. Anyway, but that, that was the one thing, like, like oh, Tim man. said that, I was like, God damn, that would have been great. And like, and that would have been a, such a perfect kind of way to tie it into the originals, the prequels, which everyone you know universally dislikes. Mm -hmm. It's like that's a cool way to be like here's you say illusions that. You the first say one. that, but here's again no, no. my point, my one, original one point. One person doesn't dislike it. No, no, no. It. There Everybody are people who it. legit because the problem is this, and this is what I've come to the conclusion of, right? With age, you get a little bit of perspective on things, right? Okay. Uh, when you watched the movie is 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 important to know. If you watched movies in your formative years, they're gonna take on a different meaning to you than if oh, you yeah, watch yeah. them when you're 38 years old. Yeah. So I buy the fact that the prequels to some people um, were more meaningful than they are to me, a person who waited 25 years or 20 years to see another Star Wars film and then got yeah. pod racing. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, someone in the was, I, I, I lost the point yeah, there no, because I, I wanted to bring it back to you. Dead by Dawn 94 says, Nikki's <laughs> explaining exactly why Kylo wanted to destroy both sides. I loved, I liked that about the movie. But then at the end, we don't get that. Yeah, I was like, are they really gonna sides. have the balls to have Rey and Kylo team up and destroy both sides? Because that would be yeah, awesome. Crazy. No, we get exactly what happens at the end of every Star Wars, good versus bad, light versus dark, that's mm -hmm. what happens. But the thing is, it's like if <sighs> if Ryan Johnson was allowed to do the next one, I think we would see something like that. But it's gonna go back to JJ. I think he was allowed, Ryan, he if, just didn't wanna do it. If but, Ryan Johnson was allowed to do the next one, I don't think we would have had so many answers in this one. Yeah. Because I really feel like he just wanted to be like, Oh, I have answers that are cool. I'm gonna put them out there. Yeah, I didn't get any like, answers yeah. in this one. What did we get? We got answers. What to what? I mean, like the end. Of, well, I mean, should we like? I don't know how much you want to say in 
Movie's Spoilery. been out for, what, six uh, months now? Spoiler. All right, well, Spoilers. I mean, We're going to talk about the end of The Last Jedi, which all of you have seen, probably. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, no, you know what? I, I don't like that. We'll, we'll, we'll let it slide. I, I, I we'll come up, back I and talk about spoilers, it. put up spoilers, bro. Put up spoilers. I, I just put it up. If you're listening right saying? now, we're going to talk about the end of the last Jedi. If, if this, if you're like, you know, I'll get around to seeing it one of those times. You're, you're just, probably not listening to this just podcast. Mu- just mute us right now, and uh, once spoilers. We'll, we'll bro, wave our away. hands when we're not talking about spoilers. Okay. Anymore, no, no, it says so. spoilers, bro, underneath you. You can't see it, but oh. so I get rid of that. Once oh, there we it stopped. is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't see it. But I, I was going to say, like, we find out her parents. I don't think so. You you think that's a lie? I think it's a lie. Well, because like, right, he's like, oh, our parents are just like whatever. They're slavers. Like, I, I don't think that's. True. I think we that got, Ryan Johnson, the like they might retroactively fix it, but I think Ryan Johnson wanted to answer that, and he answered it. Yeah. Uh, we also get like we don't get a backstory for Supreme, whatever his name is. Snoke. But like they fix like he's dead now, so he's gone. Well, I think yeah, I think those ideas like all of a sudden those big things like oh he's actually. Yeah, not I, that I think important. those were the two big like questions hey, that were out there. We killed Phasma, maybe. No, <laughs> they killed her. Like, she's dead. Like, I, that, that I feel was, like yeah. when one ship goes through your ship, you deserve to die. Yeah. If you've let that happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although, appara- I don't know. Again, who knows how space works in Star Wars? Apparently, well, a ship the, can go the, through another ship, and it's totally... In the deleted scene, live. which I don't know if it's canon or not, but, like, it is very obvious she gets killed. She gets, like, yeah, shot Yeah, like, her face is all messed up. She falls on the She hole. Is, it, no, is she, she the Boba Fett of rocket. this yeah. series? Well, I think that's the idea. Oh, is, like, they were making her the Boba Fett, where it's like, oh, it's a cool character, like, in the, you know, kind of... It just doesn't, did doesn't do justice with. to it in the movies, but, like, but maybe. I feel like at least Boba, Boba Fett had, had a moment. Yeah, you know? he had. At least a Slave really One, he was like moment. stalking them, and it was yep, cool. Stalking and them, found and then him also and... caught them. Yeah, yeah, Boba which was, was rad. All right, let's segue off of the Star Wars talk right now. Uh, we're going to go into one more story. Can I bring this one up real quick? This I found over on the Reddit. Uh, this is Steven Spielberg's uh, total gross Spielberg. for his movies. Spielberg. Scroll all the way down, Kev. Uh, to the adjusted gross. Adjusted for ticket price inflation. Uh, go all the way down, I think. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Worldwide, unadjusted. Keep going. What are we looking for? The top number there is Un- what we're looking at. Unadjusted. Right there, right there, boom. He, so what? This is worldwide, unadjusted, that's cool. Ten, he's the first director ten to ever have ten... Tri- oh, no, billion. billion. Ten billion dollars. Ten billion dollars. That what is a, amazing. What a weird way to write it, though. Yeah, that's weird. Ten you thousand millions. Billion. Yeah, yeah you that took me said- for a second there. You could have just said. Uh, it's it's fun to go back and look at some of his like some of the movies that grossed a lot versus some that didn't. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's nice. It's a nice little fun uh, jot down memory uh, lane. Look at this. I think I've seen almost all of those movies. I haven't seen the post yet. I didn't see. Um, I hated it. I didn't see Lincoln. Oddly enough, Lincoln was one. boring as shit. He did BFG. Yeah, yeah, he did BFG. Oh, now that was where he, he, that's where his, his love love affair with Mark Rylance began was uh, in the BFG. Oh, okay. And then he did uh, Bridge of Spies. Didn't care for that. Um, I don't, see. I, I haven't don't liked think you a liked serious any of his or maybe Bridge of Spies film in a while. Well, I just I just no, the problem, no, Bridge of Spies was first. Bridge of Spies uh, before what? Before BFG. Uh, BFG. Oh, okay. which I mean BFG was all CGI, so they could yeah. have probably been filming it around the same time. It was probably hey Rylance, you're pretty good in this movie. You want to. Be a big, big fucking is, giant. Is or whatever. he the guy that's the the bad guy in Bridge of Spies? The guy they're trying to trade for? Is uh, that what you're talking about? Yeah, he's like the Russian dude or German dude or whatever yeah. he is. Yeah, I don't know. he's like he. I mean, he's he's Ready Player One. He's uh, he's the he's Halliday in Ready Player One. I haven't seen it. Oh really? No. I I liked Ready Player One. I I enjoyed the books, but that book was written for a about a five year window of dudes, and yeah. I fit into that window. Okay. And so I really enjoyed the book, and then the movie they definitely opened it up a whole lot more. And uh, the nostalgia wasn't a driving force in it. It was just kind of like dressing, which mm-hmm. was good. Whereas the book, it's very much the nostalgia <laughs> is the important part of the book. And so I liked that they kind of opened it up and changed it a little bit. And I, I, I really like Ready Player One. I okay. it was good. I haven't seen it yet. Some uh, interesting, interesting stuff done in, the, in, in there as, compo- as opposed to the movie, as opposed to the book, mm-hmm. that I think could have taken a little bit uh, kind of more from the book. Like all the challenges. If you know anything about the movie, or about the, the idea. I know the rough concept of there's like, there's like this... There's a, a, tra- a massive online game. It, whoever gets the end of it wins this. Like, well, there's an the keys e- to the kingdom. There's an Easter right? egg that the, the guy who created it was left and said, "Whoever finds it can take full control over it." Mm-hmm. And it's like this, you know, global thing that like everyone wants. It's worth like trillions right. of dollars, and so it's a race to get there. And there's like clues, and they have to figure out what's the first one. How do you get the first key? And then all all of the challenges in the movie are different than in the book. Like the there's one that's kind of similar. But they've changed a little bit, and but I mean, there were some in the book that were pretty cool, and they allude to a few of the ones from the book. Okay, I mean, it's a great I, I concept. It just the, the two trailers they put out for it. I'm like, I kind of know where this is going to be. This is going to be a mid-tier, mildly boring, interesting look, quasi-interesting look at all these characters that probably 
aren't gonna be utilized properly. I thought it was fun. It, it's a fun movie. Yeah, I, I mean, didn't it's, regret watching it. It's, it's a fun kind of popcorn movie. Yeah. Apparently Ruby's in it somewhere, because yeah. uh, Bernie signed off on giving uh, giving them rights to use Ruby as a character in the movie somewhere. Oh, that's cool. Like Ruby and her scythe. So people have said, oh, I spotted her, because there's like giant scenes where it's like right, just right, tons, right, just, right. they throw everything at you. So people are saying in those scenes, you might be able to spot her, but. I think that there's you know. a scene earlier where like, you see the logo somewhere. Oh really? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I've I've yet to have anyone. <laughs> I, like I remember anyone. as we were watching, Tim was like, "Oh shit, look!" Oh really? This is what I love okay. in the chest. This is why this, this is why I don't go see this movie. Lakers had two four three two says Nick. It wasn't boring. And then right underneath, uh, King Eddie says the movie was terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. I, mean, I guess polarizing. That's a, that's, polarizing. No, that, that's an opinion with, like all movies. Anytime you're like this movie's great, there's gonna be someone that was like. Uh, I thought it was awful. Of course, There's, I mean that's it's all subjective. Nick. Josh Couture says Nick uh, Jack is the opposite of Nick in terms of movie optimism. Are you are you a movie pessimist? No, no, no. I so I have very uh, 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 eccentric tastes though. I will love a movie that is the worst movie you've ever seen, and I will admit it's terrible, but okay. I will defend it till the day I die. So like uh, like I love all the Men in Black movies. Like oh, the, yeah. those movies are damn near perfect. Well, the second I one's love not great. I love this. No, the second yeah, one is the second not one Rosario is so Dawson. Good. If you don't fall in love with Johnny Rosario Knoxville Dawson, is first off, too. Do, she's the best part of that bad. Movie. If if you do a double feature of Clerks two and and Men in Black two, you will just immediately like yep. fall in love 100%. with Rosario Dawson. There's a scene with Rosario Dawson on the roof in Clerks two where yes. she's dancing that is just like. It's just like my God. Yeah, I mean that's it. Well, it's also a scene of her on the roof where it's raining uh, in uh, Men in Black Two. Yeah. Anyway, because well, uh, she's crying. Yeah, of course. Please. I I like uh, components of Men in Black Two. I love it. But Man. coming off of Men in Black One, which was a, a, an instant classic oh, in my so book, good. and then you see what they did with Men in Black Three, and I was like, oh wait, th- this series has some life. Men in Black Three is so good. Yeah, how do you so how do you feel good. about the remake? Oh, I hate it. I hate it. You hate I like, the idea. Well, it's wait, not going to be Sonic Sonic film, right? Yeah, they're doing a new one, and it's it's I forget who's in it, but. But like, Chat, let us know who's in the, the remake for uh, but from Men in Black. Will, Will Smith, I mean, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones are Men in Black to me. Mm-hmm. Like, even though he wasn't in the, the third one, really, I mean, like, that, like it was still was his character. It, it was and, like, J&K. I, and um, the guy that played him did such a good job. Josh, Josh Brolin, yeah. who's yeah. Thanos. It, yeah. Well, you realize that, you know, all of the MCU movies are just pulling from Men in Black now, right? Because you've got Griff, who was in Men in Black 3, who was also in, uh, oh, God, what, he was in, he was in uh, Doctor Strange. Then you've got he was the he was the the nerdy guy in Doctor Strange who uh, who was like the one who wasn't as good as Steven. It was um, the one who operated on his hands. Ah, like, yeah, the guy, better. The bad guy from uh, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Then yeah. you've got you've got Josh Brolin who was also mm-hmm. in Men in Black Three, Thanos. And then there was Great. someone else too that I was like, oh, they're also in um, not Bill Hader. Um, Bill Hader's character. Bill Hader was Andy Warhol. Yeah, right? Andy Warhol. <laughs> so fucking good. Anyway, but yeah. <laughs> well. Love those. I don't know. I love them. We'll see what they do. I just want them to continue to do Man of Blacks because I did like those that series very much. You are, we, I, Jack and I, behind closed doors, by the way, l- our, our, our tastes align very heavily. Yeah. It's just every once in a while it's fun to get into that exploratory zone that we call uh, conflict here and there. Spoilers, uh, conflict makes good content. Agreeing all the time. Not so much. Not so much. Or maybe cool. I'm wrong on that. We'll can see. I give Kevin his thing now? Yeah, give Kevin his thing. Kevin, come here. We're going to go into some tips you. after this. So if you watched the Let's Play Spring Break, you know that Mr. Kevin and I sat down for multiple hours. 15 hours. And played with Lego. I had one extra set of Lego oh God, I that I it brought. Was the, I thought it was the cart and it was broken, and I was like, oh my God. So I had the, I bought a three set for uh-huh. us, and then this is the one we didn't make. This is the, uh, the Lego ship in a bottle, which is an amazing set. Yes. So I brought it for you, sir. I'm to very build. stoked, and I will start. I want to see it on a shelf at some point. Yeah. Oh, fun, absolutely. Fun fact, though. Thank you so much. Of course. Speaking of, uh, oh, I heard. of set breaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it broke my heart. Yeah, I spent like four or five hours working on this yeah. Lego Volkswagen. I'm still peeling. Oh my god. Oh, I you just, you burn like crazy out there. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I, I covered up, I but. Still, Right, I got this weird hat tan. Oh, man. So that's just life. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Adam Baird picked up the Lego set I was working on, was taking it out to the vehicle to ship it off, and the top came off, it hit the ground, and exploded. Why would he pick it up from the top? I don't know. I just don't know. Never do yours that, is you fine. Yeah. So Elise actually has yours right now, because I just said, she sh- I, I said, ship it up to LA, I'll go grab them, and then we'll like auction them off uh-huh. or something. So she has yours, which is great, and then mine in pieces. And so I'm like, well, I'll rebuild it, and then yeah. we'll, we'll auction it and off it for sucks. extra I'm life. So sorry. Ah, it's all right. Sad. No big deal. It's the, the fun is the journey, it's, it's getting there and it's building it. A lot of fun though. Thank so, you for absolutely. That's a this fun, I, and thank you for doing that. The, I bought that set for myself. It's a really good set, so it's you it's a lot of fun. See it once, once I've built it. Oh yeah, yeah. So it should be. I want to see it up on one of your shelves or something next time I come by. Done, Kevin. You have to build that for the rest of the day today. Are you kidding? Yeah. Just just it's put off all the rest of your duties. It's about a two. It's about a two-hour build. So there you have go. fun with it. I can do both. 
Anyway. Uh, Austin T has given us our first tip and said, "Hey guys, I had a terrible week last week. Hoping for better this week. Here's a fun clip that made me smile. Hope it does the same for you all, Kevin. Uh, the Great Wall of Kevin will take a look at that and let you guys know if it's good or bad. Uh, Tommy is able and said, "I come here uh, today in honor of a KF best friend, DiGiorno. Roses are red. Taco Bell makes me sh uh, shart. What? Screw Funhouse." You're the kind of funny champion of my heart. Aww. Uh, okay. Uh, projectile says, hey, Jack. It's Jack. Stay golden, pony boy. Stay gold. Stay gold, not golden. Really? Yeah, yeah stay gold. I always thought it was golden. No, it's gold. Jesus. Maybe you got that from Cherry, me because I always yeah. say stay golden. Cherry pony Valance, boy. pony boy. The Socias versus the Greasers. I, yeah, Mary Hinton, man. Great cast. <laughs> Dollar Beal says, happy birthday to my wife, Michelle. Thank you Aww. for everything you do. Nick, can you give her a, a nasty birthday wish? Kevin, may I please have the one? What's up, Michelle? <laughs> Focus, goddammit! That was Jack almost great! Jack made me laugh. What's up, Michelle? Jack and I are thinking about you. On your birthday. Happy birthday. I kept that kind of not nasty. A little skeezy. That was a nasty. A little skeezy. Just say, just say butthole and we can add it on after. But there's no, not enough saliva in there no. to be nasty. No, I don't want to do that today. VTN Wesley says, sorry to plug stuff, but recently I had some friends that lost everything to a fire. On the plus side, everyone is safe. Uh, and he gave us a GoFundMe link. Shout out uh, would be appreciate, uh, appreciated to help Cassie Amp Everett. So, uh, Kev, you want to put that? If you want to copy that link into the chat, you can go ahead and do that, guys. Eric Shkirk says, shout out to Antman0208. With his first day at his new job, I know he's not uh, here live with us anymore, but he'll see this later on. Uh, Panzer D2 says, I gave us a nice tip and said, Nick, the morning show has become a staple of my workout, my work day. <laughs> so I, just got, I got work out on the break. He works out. Work day, and uh, my boss, bosses have started to notice. Can I get a doctor's note explaining that the morning show is a necessity to my physical well being? Well, I don't know about your physical well being, but your mental well being is what I'm concerned with. And taking that well-being and twisting it a little bit so that you can be uh, uh, nerdy and perverted like us is of the utmost important. So bosses uh, slash boss bosses, if you're watching this, let Panzer G2 express himself. Uh, Louis the Great. No, that's not enough cheers. Uh, Greedy Ares has given us 500 cheers and said, Heads up, there's a 90% Twitch Prime discount to buy 500 bits, at least here in the UK. Maybe other places. Just wanted to say I love the morning show. There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is it for news. That is it for tips. We're going to talk to Jack in just a second. Uh, going to questions, comments, concerns with him. But before we do that, I want to get to P.S. I love this best friend XOXO. This is your opportunity to shout someone out that you think is just doing a bang-up job of being a human being. Go to kindoffunny.com slash best friend to fill up that form. Uh, Jacob Solo is shouting out Tony and Abby. My friends and I went to Mizzou, uh, the Mizzou meet and greet on the 11th. We were talking with all the best friends there, but Tony and Abby were especially cool. Turns out... We are from the same area in Iowa, and then these two amazing people gave us each a kind of funny shirt. I ended up getting the hoodie that I've wanted, I've been wanting for some time. It just goes to show that the best friend title isn't just a gimmick, it's absolutely true. Thank you guys for my new favorite hoodie. All right, before we get into the next section, uh, we're gonna give away a game. <laughs> well, we do that each and every day here. If you're new to the morning show, we give away a game once a day, and there are four ways you guys can win. Uh, one, you can be in the Twitch chat. Two, you can be a Twitch subscriber. How do you do that? Well. You got Amazon Prime, you get one free Twitch Prime subscription. You can link that to us, give it to us. Bing, bada bing, bada boom, you're entered to win and get. Of course, if you want to give us actual dollars and get some of our other awesome content, including watching our shows uh, live as they happen, you can go to kindoffunny.com, excuse me, patreon.com slash kindoffunny or patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and support us at the $2 above level there. You get entered to win as well. Before I tell you who today's winner is, this giveaway and this show is brought to you by Me Undies. You've heard us talk about Me Undies, and you know, that we're very big believers in their products. They're the perfect balance of comfort, fit. Uh, every month, they have a new and exciting print, and they arrive at your door in a fun bag. MeUndies uses lensing micro-modal in their underwear. It's a uh, sustainably sourced, naturally soft fi fabric, excuse me, fiber, that starts with beechwood trees and ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. The results have been downright dreamy. I like that your underwear, by the way, Jack's wearing. I'm wearing some right uh, now. right now. I he showed it. them to me earlier and it was, you. I, I love that your underwear started with trees <laughs> and now is wrapped around your wood. Uh, MeUndies, <laughs> adventurous prints and designs are all limited edition and new patterns are released every few weeks on a rolling basis. So if you're wearing the same as your friend, your friend got into them later, you don't have to worry about that. You're fine. 100% uh, satisfaction guarantee. MeUndies guarantees you will love their undies or your money back. 
right now, MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear. They offer 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love their first pair, you get a full refund. This is a no-brainer. 20% off a pair of the most comfortable underwear you will ever put on. Uh, Tim wears these. Greg wears these. And now I find out that my all-time favorite person on the planet, you wear these. Oh. Uh, that's not true, Jeff. I, I like a little bit more, but you're like a close second. I'm sorry. I, I love me. I can't. I can't. I, I can't lie. We have the underwear fairy, MeUndies underwear fairy comes yeah. by every now and then, which is Trevor. Like so, any anytime they send us a bag of MeUndies, he yeah. comes out and like distributes them. <laughs> love so. it. Go like, oh, the underwear fairies here. Oh, that's you know what? Uh, we have the it. same thing. Except for Tim keeps them all. Oh really? You just, so, yeah. It's pretty different. There you go. That Tim keeps them all. There you go. Right now, to get 20% off your first pair, free shipping, a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com/morning. That's MeUndies.com/morning. I miss. They used to have a tagline. They don't do it. They're not doing it here. I guess they're trying to get rid of it. Well, something about package, right? Yeah, it was like for the perfect, for the perfect, to make your package look even bigger. Get me on it or something like that. <laughs> was it not that? that at all. It was like, like it? angels holding holding your your package. They, I think. They, is what they you want a, someone to come physically hold your package. That was that it, Kevin. No, okay. I, I, well, I believe it, uh, it's like a kiss from a rose. There it is. I think is what it was. Seal wears me on He does, <laughs> and he wore them while. No, I'm just joking. Okay. Uh, today's winner comes from Patreon. Congratulations to Mark Wilson. You have won Pit People on Steam. Yay. Right on. All right, we got about five minutes left of the show. Everyone, queue up your questions, comments, or compliments for Jack. We're going to go over those real quick. Uh, and then we're going to give him a break. And then he's going to come back and record not one, but two MCUs in <sighs> reviews. So excited. I get, so, the, the, when, when Tim was like, hey, do you want to come do one of these things? I said, there are two movies I want to do. I want to do Spider Man Homecoming and Guardians 1. Which uh, they didn't work out that way, no. but I'm doing Guardians two and Homecoming, which is just like perfect. I love it. Man. So so excited for what this. a fun! Like, I actually, uh, uh, I was at a uh, a comedy show last night, and uh, one of the comedians, one of the open micers, you do like, comedy? I do. I do oh, stand up okay. a little bit, a little bit every once in a while. Okay. Well, I don't know if you can call what I do comedy, but I yeah. certainly I certainly give it the old college try. Uh, and so and someone was like, "Hey, you're gonna go to the next mic after this at the late mic at uh, on Sunday night?" And I'm like, "I can't. I have to go home and work." And they're like, what kind of work do you have to do? I'm like, I have to finish watching Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> and they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, because my life is dope and I do you dope watch shit. movies in parts. Thank you, Kanye. What do you mean? What, how? Because I had a busy schedule yesterday and didn't give myself enough time. I Dude, I watch a movie. I'll pause the movie, go away for like 30 minutes, come back to it. You that, Last time man. I was on the show, we talked about uh, J.K. Simmons was mm-hmm. said he'd be up for doing more J. Jonah Jameson, which yeah. I lost my goddamn Love mind it. for. If they bring him back, that would be Because aside from Robert Downey Jr., that might be the most perfect casting of a Marvel character ever. Yeah. J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson in Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, the Sam Raimi movies, was... Awesome. It was amazing. Um, followed closely closely by, um, oh God, what's her name? Um, uh, Betsy Brandt was uh, uh, from Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth Banks is, as Betsy Brandt. She was also great. What was she? But what was she? She was the. She basically works at the, the Daily Bugle. She's oh, the okay. one. Like she like would. Oh, pay she Peter's was the one checks. that was like pay Peter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, she was barely in it, but it was yeah. like. Oh. And then like when when they killed the the Sam Raimi movie, she was like she like tweeted that she was sad about it. it was oh, like, oh, that's sad. But, I can bring him back. Anyway, uh, Ignacio Rojas in the chat says, Nick, did you ever watch Daddy's Home Two? I have not. Oof. But I will one day. I'm a big Daddy's Home John fan. John Lithgow. John Lithgow, man. I'm a big Daddy's he Home fan. popped up in Pitch Perfect 3. I haven't as seen a, that yet. He, as an Australian. Really? Uh, John Lithgow is an Australian. Is he, he's not from Australia, no, right? Yeah, I don't I think, think so. so. so anyway. It would be amazing if I didn't know that this entire time about John Lithgow. <laughs> well, he, he plays, uh, uh, what's her name's uh, dad in the movie? Uh, 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 God, from... Uh, not Anna Kendrick. Oh, does he play... Uh, 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 what's her... Uh, God, uh, oh, the crazy girl. Rebel Wilson? Rebel Wilson. Yeah. He plays Rebel Wilson's dad. Yeah. She's so it's so so She's dumb. So funny. That fat, mo- fat Amy is that her name? Fat right? Amy. Yeah. Fat Amy. Um, but yeah, Pitch Perfect three. Not bad. Not bad. Enjoy it. Good. Good plain movie. If you're watching the movie. Uh, D H Canada says, I don't know, man. Topher Grace as Eddie Brock was pretty spot on. Topher Grace would have made a great Spider Man. He would have made a great Spider Man, and they got Tobey Maguire, which he just seemed bummed all the time. That's why I love, mm-hmm. I love, love, love about Tom Holland because Tom Holland looks the part. Acts the part and like he's just having fun. And whoever's idea it was to give his suit a voice so he could have someone to talk to, yeah. God damn, that was a genius yeah. move. It's so Such good. a good oh, move. One of my favorite parts in the movie is when he's like, How long have I been in here? And she's like, 35 minutes. He's like, What? Yes. <laughs> we gotta get out of here. Which is t- totally like a high school kid. Though, oh, so. I love it. I love so. it. Was it um, did they say, was it 37 minutes? It was 37, 37 minutes. Yeah, yeah, 37 yeah, yeah. minutes. Which is so arbitrarily perfect. Yeah. Was so, it, it, there's any like there was a clerk's fan there? Uh, but 30, 30, 30, yeah. in a row? Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. That, maybe, a... maybe. I mean, I, I wouldn't shock me. Mark Webb might be, or it was Mark, no, Mark Webb did the Amazing Spider-Man movie. Yeah, it was, which uh, it's funny you mentioned that because I was literally before I started watching this, I, Amazing Spider-Man Two was oh, on man. TV, 
And what a difference in those two characters. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, uh, Tim, Tim mentioned this one time to me, because uh, I'm not a huge Spider-Man fan. He watched Amazing Spider-Man 2, and he was like, I'm like, I thought it was really good. I thought the comedy hit. I thought uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was, like, catchy and fun and, like, had those quips and they were good. And Tim's like, nah, it still just wasn't right. And I'm like, ah, we'll agree to disagree. I go back and watch it literally back to back with a few scenes from Sp Amazing Spider-Man 2 and then going back and watching Homecoming, and I'm like, oh, no, he was right. I hate, yeah. to, I hate when Tim's right. But, <laughs> but that being was. said, Spider-Man 2 is great. Great, great movie. Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. Not Amazing Sam Raimi with, uh, with Doc Ock. God, it's such a good thing. And the reveal of Peter to uh, Mary Jane, which is so good. Dude, they made one choice in Homecoming that was probably the, like, the single best thing they could have made from a costume standpoint. Is they gave his eyes the ability oh, yeah. to move. Yeah, yeah. And when you go back and watch the other, the other movies where they don't move, man, they're so dead. Weird. Yeah. It's yeah. so weird. There's so much more they get out of it. So much more expressive. Oh, God, it's so much better. Yeah. Uh, all right, folks. Cue them up. Cue them up. Uh, VTN Wesley says Andrew Garfield is bad, and those two movies are just awful. <laughs> I don't really bad. feel. No, I, th I think it was fine. The, was, was the whole idea good. of like, Spider like Peter Parker's parents being all like in this weird conspiracy. Yeah, that was, weird. That was like, that but, was like, like whatever. That where they're like secret agents, you're like, no. And then like the first one where it was like, you know, Peter has to get up there to fight, you know, giant giant croc, and it was like, okay, all the crane guys, remember when you saved us? Here we go, we're yeah. gonna make a pay. Hey, Spider Man, we got the cranes, light them up. Ashcraft Cliff 1992 says, Amazing Spider Man 2 is George Clooney Batman level of bad. Mm. Sir, mm. nothing is George Clooney Batman level of bad. No. That was a that was a low that you better hope and, and hope to God against all you remember that we never hit again. fucking Batman MasterCard? I was just about to say that. Oh, he had his it own guy. It was like his own Batman card. He had his own freaking, like, you know, Batman MasterCard thing. He popped right. up. It's like, don't leave home don't without leave home it. With don't like, leave the bad cave without it. Or whatever the fuck it's like, like, God damn. It was... And then the ice skates, too, just happened to have his boots. It was so bad. It was so bad. It was so, <gasps> It was it was it was quite terrible. It's a day of dual special guests, ladies and gentlemen. Wait. My favorite person ever is back. Please welcome Shirtless Spider Man. There he is. <laughs> How have you like been? Reviewing my movie today. Oh, we are going to talk about your movie, Shirtless Spider Man. <laughs> is that <laughs> what is that noise? The sound effect that you make <laughs> when you when you sling webs for all the audio yeah. listeners at home. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I, I noticed you got a new mask. I did. Uh, that's Ooh. really creepy. I just wanted you to know because it's it's like a Halloween mask that it's it's like harder than the other one. Yeah. Do we, do also, we, his other are, mask is right there. If you ever wanted to just wear that again? I can comfortably in this one. Oh, okay, the other <laughs> one you can't. One for the ability to see. It's but so I feel scary. like that one is going to give you a lot more face sweat because oh, it's not, made of pure rubber. I mean, you know, shirtless Spider-Man's only here for a little bit before he rolls on to the next adventure. That's he's going to go back to high school. I'm so glad so. that Greg let you come by, by the way, because every time... Oh, uh, is Greg here? I, I still haven't met him. I think he was here. Oh, you haven't met Greg? No. Oh, I thought you guys were really good friends. No. I thought he was keeping you from me, uh, like you do when you have a cool friend. I was like, hey, come bring him over to the party. And he's like, no, I don't want you to be my... He's my cool friend. That's what I thought it was. No, no, he's just a guy who no. takes photos of me sometimes. You oh, know? that's pretty cool. Well, anyways, you have a happy birthday, slugger. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, shirtless Spider-Man. <laughs> Woo! It's, it's crazy. Fun to note that shirtless Spider-Man and Greg Miller have the same shoulder hair. <laughs> there it is. You saw it up close there, a little blurred out. There you go. Spiders don't sweat, says not the Lysander at work. Well, there you go. I don't know that. Let's go into sub only mode real quick and then we'll end this one. Oh my god. Well, I have a question. Why are you guys hating on George Clooney's Batman? Because it's horrible. Joey. George. <laughs> no, Joey. With, with Schwarzenegger, or, or was that Schwarzenegger? No, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. I used to see Ice you. Man. What killed the Freezing dinosaurs? Hell, Batman. The Ice Age. Not even a joke. You know what? L like literally, like I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> that being said, you know what I, I love? I thought the meteor killed the dinosaurs. Yeah, but the meteor started the Ice Age. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Freaking uh, uh, Jim Carrey as the Riddler was genius casting, and he would have made a great Riddler. And they, he would have made a great Riddler in a Tim Burton movie, I think. I think he could have pulled it off. I think he could have pulled it off like a Nolan movie. The problem is, did you know they hate each other? Who's that? Uh, Tommy Lee Jones hated. Jim Carrey. Oh, really? Yeah, in the, oh, in the IMDb trivia, well, it's one of the things I read. He apparently, like, first day, walked up to Tommy Lee Jones and was like, hey, man, I'm a big fan. And Tommy Lee Jones was like, I fucking hate you. Really? I don't like your brand of comedy. I don't think you're funny. Well, after, I don't want to work I with mean, you. I mean, after seeing the whole, like, the documentary about what in Jim and Andy or whatever, it's like, yeah. okay, maybe Jim Carrey had that period in, like, the mid-90s where he was a little uh, off his rocker. This was, this was well after that, though. I th oh, no, this was, like, before that. Yeah. Because he, he didn't do the... It was, like, Ace Ventura, you know, and then he kind of, and then he fell into the Joker role. I mean, that was, like, Liar Liar. It was all kind of, like, that early time. Liar Liar was great, though. I liar feel like, but movie. I feel like the, the Andy awesome. Man on the Moon was well after Batman. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Look that up, Kev. 
You mind? Uh, sure. No, that being said, no. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is a almost perfect movie. It's a cool so, movie. Fuck, it's a good, a good movie. movie. It's so such a good movie. It's such an indie movie. It's very All right, Man on indie. the Moon was 1999, and we're talking about Batman Forever. Yeah. Yes. I still feel like forever, I feel like, like you bring back Jim Carrey as Joker right now. He could do it. Yeah, it is Batman Forever, 1995. 95. Wow. One with Man on the Moon. 99. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I, okay. I remember that being very far back. No, I really feel like he got cast as Joker in like the height of his career. Okay. And Tommy Lee Jones was just being a dick. Uh, um, not Joker. Well, I mean, um, like I'm sorry, Riddler, not Riddler, Joker. Yeah. I, I do stand by the fact that if they ever like when they if they ever wanted him to play Joker, he could absolutely do that. I'm afraid he would do. I mean, now Heath Ledger sort of like made that role into a different tone, you sure. know. And then like, and Mark Hamill has like the comic book style or the the cartoon. I think that is like such the what Joker needs to be. That when you get someone like you know uh, what's his name, Jared Leto, doing his Joker, he's like, I'm gonna do something so different. It's like, oh, it was so bad. I like, liked his Joker. I hated. His I thought Joker. that was the only thing that was actually interesting about Suicide Squad. You could have taken the Joker out of Suicide Squad and made it, the movie would have been fine. Like, oh, you had, could have taken all the characters out of Suicide Squad, mm, the movie would have been better. I mean, god damn, they're, they're, uh, yeah. The, be the best part of Suicide Squad was Boomerang, which was, he was great. Jai Courtney was awesome in yeah, that movie. Yeah, he was actually good in that movie. Like, uh, but like the, there were so many dumb things. Like someone pointed out, the rule of three in filmmaking is where you do something three times, you set, you set it up, bring it back, and then pay it off. That's the rule of three. In that movie, he talks about how he loves, or like in his rap sheet, he loves unicorns. He has a unicorn in his jacket. Like at one point, like he pulls out a unicorn, stuffs it back in left pocket. Yeah, somewhere in the middle of the movie, brings out the unicorn again, stuffs it left pocket. Later in the movie, gets stabbed in the chest, and it's like, oh god, like right over his left pocket. But he beats the guy off, pulls this jacket out. You no, it's just a stack of cash he had. It wasn't the unicorn that saved his life. It was like it literally in the spot. It was like the whole time. It was like, how do you set it up? In that? Oh, anyway. I feel like you uh, watched that movie way too many times. I've seen that movie a few times. I watched it one time. I, that was another one. Like I hate watching. You want to talk about? You want to talk about movies that I I fucking zeroed in on right off that first trailer. That first trailer dropped, and everyone's like, I don't know. It actually looks pretty good. I'm like, Are we watching the same trailer? <laughs> this movie looks bad, and it's giving me massive solo trailer vibes. Where I'm like. There's nothing in this trailer that says this is gonna fucking wow you. Yeah, yeah. In fact, all the trailer for both of those, they're very similar. I'm like, there should have been a joke there that should have worked, but it didn't work. Yeah. Like when we get to that, that first trailer where he turns around, he's like, we're gonna be okay. We're fine. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's fine. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay. Well, I, and also in the Suicide Squad, at the one point where they're at the bar, it's like, all right, you hear, turn your shit off. All right, you're good. You're free to go. And, and then he just gets up and walks out. And it's like, that's brilliant. Like, that's what he would do. Yeah. And then, like, the next shot is like, oh, he's with him again. Like, yeah. But why? Why? Just... I'll tell you though, uh, you want to watch a good Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad movie, go watch Hell to Pay. Uh, IGN has a review up right now. Kev, you want to bring that up? Yep. Uh, this was going to be a news story, but I don't want to spoil the review. Just go over there and check it out. Uh, oh, I, I really liked this movie. If you want to get to heaven, you got to raise a little hell. It's it's definitely an animated it's movie, uh, but it's super violent and funny and crazy, and I, I liked it a lot. So don't, cool. ruin, don't ruin the score. People can go check out the score. I mean, it there. popped up for half a second. That's fine. Oh, way to go. Hey, Model 3. It's you guys straight dubbed questions today. L O P says it's Thunder Sensei. I don't know what that means. Oh, L O L. Is that, is that ignored it, questions? Yeah. Oh, do you guys have questions? Is all that, was that a thing we were gonna do? Well, if you guys start asking fun questions, maybe I'll. Are we gonna do this video really quick? Sure. Jack Achievement Hunter, what's the sitch? Uh, Achievement Hunter the musical, what's the sitch? It's coming. It's coming. It'll be it'll be done before uh, Extra Life this year at some point. There you go. There's your there's your question. You guys ready? Yes. For what? What? Oh, we're gonna do this little fun clip. We do a fun clip section. If someone gives a good clip, we'll we'll show it. On oh, the show. okay. I, I don't know that it's fun, but it's 11 seconds. It's like a YouTube okay. haiku. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. We're definitely gonna claim for this song. Yeah. The Beach Boys. Do you think they're claim happy? I would imagine so. But like, look at him. I oh, yeah, I thought it? that clip would have been better if he just took a shit on that mirror. Just shit on the mirror. You want me to play some Beatles for you? Oh. Or uh, perhaps some Radiohead? Some Prince? I just, just play it into a speaker for you. We'll you take one more question from DH Canada. It says, hey Jack, uh, is there a YouTube person group you haven't collaborated with yet that you would love to? We were just talking about it actually. Yeah, you were talking about there, there this was, there's, there's a YouTuber that I love watching. Um, it makes no sense for us to do any collaborations with him. But this guy named Strict Toaster, who I love. He, I've been watching him since he had like got a thousand subs and now he's over a hundred thousand. He is a designer by trade. Like his normal his normal nine to five is he's a designer. And then he plays like City Skylines, Planet Coaster, SimCity, 
and makes the most beautiful looking cities. And like right now, he's building a an abandoned mall. Like he's just building a, like a mall, and it's just like you'll watch him what build does he a, build them in in like city three, skylines. Oh, city skylines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he'll literally play the game, but he plays in creative mode. So it's just like unlocked everything. And like he'll work on a road for like fifteen minutes, and then just destroy the whole thing, and then just rebuild it and just, until it's perfect. Interesting. And it's just like something about watching it, just like until it gets exactly right. And he's a super nice guy, super humble, and I just love watching his stuff. Well, there you and go. So, there you go. Strict toaster. Check it out. Nice little shout out. Everyone, so, go check out that, that channel if you like it. Give it a sub. And if you do get a sub, literally leave a comment on every video you watch saying Jack sent me here. Yeah, he's got a Patreon too if you, you want to watch his stuff early. So. Jack to thank me. Uh, speaking of thank you, thank you so much for being on the thank show. Thank you for having me. Today. I love being Appreciate on the show. Appreciate you. We'll see you uh, in about five minutes after we wrap the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Daylight Time, whatever the hell we're in right now. Uh, until then, stay tuned uh, for Kind of Funny Games Daily coming at you in about five minutes. Before that, in the interim, if you're watching this live, you're going to hear my voice in your ear talking about subs. Kevin, cut the feed.